Hello everyone. First of all, let me just say that I am not a YouTuber. I am not a social <laughs> influencer or whatever. Um, this is the first time that I'm doing something like this and recording a video and sharing it. So please no haters and please don't talk shit about me in the comments because <laughs> it's my first time and I'm super nervous. Um, the reason why I wanted to do this, first of all, is because it was really important. Um, and the reason is, is that there's not enough of these videos on YouTube as another gentleman who you might come into contact with on here will suggest. Um, so I just want to share my experience with you all um, about having cataracts at a really young age and then having to decide on which lens to choose and what my outcome is. So yesterday um, is a week after my second surgery on my left eye um, and I decided to go with the Vividi lenses and I'll discuss more about that in a moment. So let me just take you back for a second. So last year in 2022, I started to notice some vision changes. I think it was around August of 2022 where I noticed um, some huge differences in my right eye. So I was a little concerned, um, didn't know what to do and decided to finally go get an eye exam in October of 2022. So I went, doctor checked out my eye. After looking at the symptoms and stuff on Google and on YouTube, I knew in my heart that I had cataracts um, and I just wanted to see what the doctor would say. So she didn't really say much about my cataracts. She prescribed glasses for me and sent me on my way. So I spent like two or three hundred dollars in that little thing just alone just buying glasses and getting the consult and everything um by january of 2023 i noticed that my vision had not really changed and so i was doing this thing where i was taking off my prescription glasses and looking at things and putting them back on and i was like these are exact it's exactly the same there's no changes so went back to the same doctor. It was then that she admitted that I did have cataracts and that she didn't expect them to progress as quickly. So she gave me a referral to a surgeon. I was pretty freaked out because basically one of the only options, the only options for this is um, cataract surgery. So I was freaked out because I was, I've never had a surgery before. I'm only 44. I was like, this is really scary. So went home and I did um, a Google search on the surgeons that she referred me to. Um, the reviews were not good. I think they had like 3.8 reviews. Read some of them. I was like, hell to the no. Cause you know, these are your eyes, right? So I didn't want to <laughs> take any chances. So I kept researching and I came across this doctor. I don't get any promotions or discounts or anything for saying who they are. I just want to tell you who I went with. Um, so this doctor popped up on Google, Dr. Robert Melendez with Juliet Eye Institute of New Mexico. Um, looked at their reviews, nearly five star reviews, 4.9 reviews um, across the board. People are saying amazing things. And I was like, oh, this is where I want to go. So I called the doctor up and I said, okay, please send me a referral to this doctor instead. So <clears throat> called them up to schedule an appointment for my intake. Um, immediately, I was super impressed. I remember I talked to a, a woman named Amy. She spent like 30 minutes on the phone with me just in that initial phone call because I was freaked out. I was asking questions like, is it going to hurt? What's it going to feel like? Blah, blah, blah. And um, she was like, no, you're good. This is going to be super easy. You're going to be glad you did it. So <clears throat> I did my intake on February 4th, 2023. Um, they, I went, they did all these tests on me. The doctor's amazing. His staff was amazing. They have all this high tech equipment. Did all these tests on my eyes. It was determined that I have cataracts in both eyes. Um, which I was really surprised because I was like, oh, the, my left eye is my good eye. I have no issues. Um, but I had a baby cataract growing in the left eye. This one on the right eye had already progressed pretty severely. 
So he said that he thought that it was probably caused by either untreated pre-pre-diabetes and or steroid use. So in 2021, I had Bell's palsy on this side of my face and I took two rounds of steroids for it. So <clears throat> the surgeon thought it was a combination of one of the two. I've never been diagnosed with diabetes. Um, I did have pre-pre-diabetes about a year and a half ago, but I got myself out of it. So I wasn't sure where that was coming from. Anyway, it was a lot to digest. He went over the options for me. It was super quick. He really recommended the Panoptics IOL, the Panoptics lens by Alcon, um, which is an amazing lens. It sounds super great. It has a 99% satisfaction rate. It sounded amazing. Um, went to schedule the surgery. They wanted to do it like within two weeks. They wanted to do it within a week apart. Um, I scheduled it and I was also super freaked out and overwhelmed. So I went home and did a, some preliminary research and then contacted them and rescheduled the appointment. <laughs> so um, it was gonna, it was expensive. It's, it's gonna cost a lot of money. And I'll, I'll talk more about that in the video later. You get what you pay for essentially though. So <clears throat> I needed to raise some money. I needed to do some crowdsourcing. Maybe I should put a link in the comments so you all can send me some money because um, I'm just a poor social worker. So I was like, shoot, I want to be able to pay for at least half of this surgery and then finance the rest if I need to. Um, so contacted them. They rescheduled this eye for April 5th, 2023. It was a Wednesday. Um... They had also scheduled the left one for a week apart, but in between then I had had some conversations with the doctor. Um, I asked him if I really needed to get this one done a week apart. He said no. Um, however, I, I shouldn't wait no longer than six months, he said. Um, I thought this eye was really good. So I just wanted to get this eye done and then cross my fingers and hope that I would never have to get this eye done, mainly because I was super scared of the surgery. So, between February and April, I did a shit ton of research. I looked all over Google, looked all over YouTube. It was really hard to find good videos, which is why I'm doing this and hope that others pay it forward. Um, stalked a couple people who did really good videos on here, such as Danielle and Glenn. Um, thank you both. You guys were awesome. I stalked them on Instagram so I could ask them like additional questions because... I was really having a hard time choosing between the Panoptics and the Vividi. So when I came across the Vividi, I was like, wow, this one has 93% satisfaction rate. It has a different technology. It does not have the glare, the starburst, and the halos, um, possible side effects, which is what I was really interested in the most. Being a young person who still wants to be able to drive at night, go out at night, do things, I didn't want to have any possible visual disturbances with my with lights and halos and stuff. So I went back and forth forever, asking the doctor specific questions, doing research, like I said, stalking people, asking them questions. I think my biggest regret with the panoptics was that I wasn't going to be able to see super close. And that was my biggest fear with it. I knew in my heart though, that I definitely wanted to go with the Vividi lenses. Um, it didn't help that they were both the same amount of money um, at the surgeon that I went to. They both cost the same out of pocket. So it was really up to me and what I wanted to do about that. So finally, I decided on the Vividi lenses. Now, let me tell you a couple more things, though. Before surgery, like I said, did a lot of research on YouTube, um, looked at doctor videos as well as patient experience videos. There's a couple of doctors that recommend this. So this is what I did. You don't have to do it. I feel like it's helped me to have a super successful surgery. So one of the doctors on here said two weeks before surgery to start using these. They're called OcuSoft lid scrub things. And I'll just show you. They come in this pack. I ordered them on Amazon. They look like this. And you're just supposed to like clean your eyes with them morning and night is what I was doing. And then I started doing these at least three times a day. I use them much more now. However, 
I started using these. They're recommended by my doctor and other doctors online. They're the Sustain Ultra PF eye drop things. Started those because um, I wanted to have a really good successful surgery. Um, I was also super nervous, super anxious, super scared. So I knew as a therapist, I needed to prepare myself mentally. So I was doing guided imagery, guided meditation. There's a great um, guided imagery I found on audiobooks by a person named Belle Ruth Knapperstack. And um, it's a, a guided imagery for preparations for doing surgeries while awake or something like that. Um, I also purchased a guided hypnosis from naturalhypnosis.com called um, Fear of Surgery Hypnosis. Um, that was super helpful as well. Also, I went ahead and engaged in EMDR therapy, which is eye motion rapid desensitization, something or other, um, because I've heard about it in the past as a therapist. And I knew that it's really good for trauma, but also really good for um, desensitizing someone for a possible traumatic event or a perceived scary event. So engaged in that because I remember at the intake, the doctor was like, look, um, we don't do intravenous IV, um, anesthesia here. You're gonna be under a local and oral anesthesia. I need you to be awake for this surgery. I need you to dig deep, meet me halfway, and look at that white light. And I was like, okay, whatever. Um, so I did, I prepared myself for that. Um, this surgery, the right eye was done first on April 5th, 2023. Um, I went, it was in the morning, um, they, I paid first. Then they took me in a room and started prepping me. They checked my blood pressure. They cleaned my eye. They started putting the magical numbing drops in. Then they brought me to this other little section to just sort of chill out and wait. Um, then they brought me the oral anesthesia to put under my tongue. It tasted kind of gross. Um, next thing I know, about 11 minutes later, they were bringing me into the operating room where I was strapped on a table. I'm not strapped, but I was laid on a table. And then they secured me with these like belts um, they secured my arms, they put a blood pressure thing around my arm, um, they stuck this mask over my face with a hole for my eye, and some oxygen up underneath. There was a bunch of them in there that first time around, so it went super quick. Um, next thing I know is there were some things in my eyes holding it open, more drops, then the next thing I know, doctor was there talking to me very calmly. He said we were already 10% done. Next thing I know, he said we were like 20% done. Um, I guess my eyes wandered a little bit. He was like, you only have one job, girl. I need you to keep looking at that light. <laughs> so I did my best. Um, next thing I know, he was like, okay, we're about 75% done. Then he was like, we're about, we're done. I just need to take some pictures now and you're good to go. So... <clears throat> I saw some weird lights and stuff and he took some photos. Next thing I knew, they were taking that thing off my face, took me into another room, checked it out. It was all good. Um, went home and rested. I had um, a, like a frosty vision for most of the day and that's because my pressure in the eye was high. Once the eye pressure goes down, it does become a lot more clear. Um, I didn't have any complications with that first surgery. These are the drops I had to take. Um, they made it super easy for me. They're my little yellow drops. I was to start them a day before surgery, one drop three times a day in each eye, and then every day for three weeks after the surgery. Um, I found out after the surgery that he put in the Vividi Toric lens in this right eye. I asked him about it at the one week follow-up, and he said that it was because the astigmatism in this eye was too great to fix with the laser, and that's why he used the toric lens. Um, there was no redness, no pain, no discomfort. Super easy. I didn't have to wear a crazy patch. Um, I didn't have to do a lot of the crazy things that people talk about on these videos, like not shower and this and that and the other. Um, all I was instructed to do was to keep using my drops and to also increase these, the cystane use. 
So these I use now about four to six times a day and they're super crucial. Um, in a beauty box that I got online, I got the this eye mask from this company called Bucky. I don't get any sponsorship for this. It basically looks like a little bra for your eyes. <laughs> um, it has little indentions here. Anyways, this came in a, in a lot of, this came in big handy because um, they want you to protect your eyes when you sleep and so it's indented so there's not pressure on your eye. Um, I was thrilled. I was very happy with my vision. Of course, things were much clearer than with the cataract. Um, I wasn't loving some certain things though. I did see a crescent out of the right side of my eye for a little bit. For a while, actually, there was some flickering going on. I was worried that maybe the wrong lens was put in. Um, thing, vision was great, except for around dusk into the nighttime where it gets a little bit more challenging. Um, doctor says that'll improve significantly at around six months. Instantly, I knew I chose the right lens because I would look at a light bulb and I would not see any halos or starbursts around it. I mean, almost instantly. Car lights are a different thing. They're taking a lot of adjustment to get used to. Um, indoor lights and lots of lights outside in the darkness can be challenging at times as well. Um, so I wanted to get my left eye done right away because what I noticed was <laughs> that it was worse than I thought. So this is my dominant eye, the left eye. And like another guy's experience on here, listen to his experience. I can't think of his name right now. I think it's Mike in California. Um, he talks about how no one did a lot of videos about getting the non-dominant eye done first versus the dominant eye. And I think there's something to that. So my left eye is my dominant eye and it was my good eye, at least I thought. However, after I got the lens put in, it, I could tell how bad it was, um, especially the glares and the lights and stuff. So I wanted to get it done as soon as possible. There was some discussion on whether or not they would be going through insurance or not, so I had to wait a little while. So finally was able to get it scheduled. Scheduled it for May 24th, which was last Wednesday in the morning. Um, prepared for it exactly the same. I was not as anxious because I knew what to expect this time. At least I thought I did. Um, this one was a little bit different. The reason is, is I woke up, I wasn't feeling well. I think I had some food poisoning the night before. Um, was taken back to the operating room much more quickly. However, this time I was taken in two different rooms. So first I was taken in a room where I guess now what he explained to me is he did the laser procedure on this eye. So because my astigmatism was not as severe as the right eye, he went ahead and corrected it with the laser first and then put in a regular Vividi IOL in this eye. So I didn't like it as much. It was a little, it was a bit more uncomfortable that first step with the laser and everything. And then I was brought into the other room I was familiar with where I guess he injected the lens. Um, they tested my vision and everything before the surgery, did additional measurements, things like that. Um, it was a little bit more uncomfortable after the surgery in terms of like discomfort. I don't know how to describe it. It wasn't painful, it just was uncomfortable. My eye was definitely a little bit more red as opposed to this one the first time around. Um, and he promised that some of the issues I was having with the right eye would go away once this lens was inserted. Um, and he was correct. So I would say by Friday of last week, so two days after the surgery, seeing super clear, <laughs> very excited. I can see up close, I can read this sustain box I can see it right about till there and with both eyes it's till there so as you can see that's not very far from your face um I can see far away very crisp very clear especially during the day um I don't think that I need glasses I do wear reading glasses when I'm on my phone longer than 10 minutes because it can be a little hard um, so I will put on some reading glasses. I use 1.25s for those. Otherwise, 
the doctor got me to a place where I don't think I need glasses with the Vividi IOL. Um, and I don't have a lot of light disturbances. I do have some now, but he says those will definitely clear up within the next six months or so. Um, I went for my one week follow up on Tuesday of this week and they tested my vision. My vision is 2015 minus three letters, which is better than 2020. So I guess officially I'm 2020. However, with good lighting and a little bit of straining, I can be 2015. Um, super thrilled and super excited with my outcome. I would highly recommend the Vividi IOL to anybody who's on the fence. I can't speak for the panoptics because I didn't, didn't elect to get it put into my eye. Um, it was an expense out of pocket. However, I felt at my age that it was worth it. Um, what else can I share with you? Oh, you get what you pay for. My surgeon was very expensive. He also spent a lot of money on various equipment and technology that I know others in the state don't have. Um, so my experience was relatively seamless from start to finish. It was easier than any dental procedure I've ever experienced. Um, very quick, painless, easy, easy aftercare. Like I said, I just have to put these yellow drops in my eye, one drops, one drop three times a day. Um, I still use these in the morning and in the evening, just out of precaution, just to keep the eyelid area clean. Um, and like I said, these are a must. You have to use the artificial tears because in the afternoon and evenings, your eyes will get dry and your vision will not be as clear. However, if you use the drops, you'll be good to go. Um, surgeon is important. This is who I went to. I don't get anything for promoting him or saying his name or anything. All I know is he did right by me. He did an amazing job. I was very scared, very anxious. And I feel like my vision is how I remember it to be in my 20s. Um, so I really hope this is helpful. I want to thank all the people who came before me and gave offered videos as well of their experiences and were brave enough to do so because I think it's important. Um, if you have any questions, reach out. If you go through the same experience, um, hopefully you will share a video of your experience to help others as well. Um, thank you to Glenn. Thank you to Danielle. Thank you to a couple other videos on here that shared their, shared their experience with the Vividi lens. Um, I'm very happy and I would recommend it to anybody. Um, like I said, these are great for when you're sleeping. This Bucky mask. These and these. You'll be good to go. All right, good luck. Don't be scared. If you're scared, do some guided imagery, guided meditation, or get you some EMDR and you'll be good to go. All right, I hope I covered it all. Take care. Bye.